For the October 15th of the Pitt County Planning Board to order, I uh, welcome the people in the audience and the people on the uh, TV. At this time, we'll ask Tabitha to do the roll call. Here. Here. Thomas Harris. Here. Aaron Hines. Here. Ricky Hines. Here. Clayton Malloy Jr. Here. Matt Nobles. Here. Kenneth Ross. Here. Danny Smith. Here. And Mr. Chairman, we were notified that Johnny Penner will not be here tonight. All right, thank you, Tabitha. At this time, we'll ask uh, Kenneth Ross if he will open up with a word of prayer, and then Thomas Harris will uh, lead the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Our gracious name of the Father, we want to thank you for another day. I ask that you guide and direct us as we go about the business of the county and the people of Pitt County, that we do what is right for the best of everybody involved. All these blessings we ask in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> all right. Each one of y'all were mailed out the minutes of the Previous meeting at this time, do we have any corrections or a motion to accept? Motion to approve. approve. Second. Got a motion to accept and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, same. Okay, at this time, our planning board appointments. Uh, Janice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as we've mentioned a couple of times in uh, the past, we have three new appointments to the board and they're all here tonight and did want to let you know that uh, at the last commissioner's meeting uh, the commissioners also reappointed for a third term Ms. Wanda Harrington she's not able to be with us tonight so uh, as part of this we did want to swear in our new members we have with us tonight uh, Nancy Wilson from the legal staff she's a paralegal as well as a notary so she'll be handling that and she'll be requesting each one of the new members to come up uh, to be sworn in. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Nancy and let her go about that. Ms. Barefoot? State your name. I stay here, but do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain the Constitution and laws of the United States. The Constitution and the United laws. And laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of my appointment. The duties of my appointment to the Pitt County Planning Board. Pitt County Planning Board. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Thank you. And Danny Smith. Ricky Hines. I and state your name. Ricky Hines. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and maintain. I will support and maintain. The Constitution. The Constitution. And laws of the United States. The laws of the United States. And the Constitution. The Constitution. And laws of North Carolina. And the laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not, not inconsistent therewith. 
and that I will faithfully discharge and I will faithfully discharge the duties of my appointment the duty of my appointment to the Pitt County Planning Board to the Pitt County Planning Board so help me God so help me God congratulations Okay, th at this time, uh, it's election of office and the executive secretary. Good evening. I'll introduce you to our new assistant county attorney, Jordan Smith, who's going to assist you with the election of officers. Thank you, Jim. Good evening. Good evening. Um, before we begin, um, I just want to lay out a few basic rules. Um, any member of the board can be nominated. Um, any member can nominate his or her his or herself and there's no need to second a nomination and at this time I'll open the floor to uh, nominations for the office of chair I nominate Thomas Harris I nominate Kenneth Ross who's the vice chairman no. Any other nominations? Yeah, I nominate Kenneth Ross as chairman. <laughs> I withdraw my nomination. Yeah, thank you. Hearing no further nominations, we'll close nominations at this time. Um, all in favor of Kenneth, Kenneth Ross as chair, say aye. 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 Sounded unanimous. All oppo any opposed? Uh, so, Kenneth Ross is the chairman of the planning board. Um, and at this time, I'll open the floor to nominations uh, for vice chair. Thomas Harris. Harris. I'll second. I'm nominate Johnny Fennel since he's not here. <laughs> uh, any further nominations? Uh, nominations will close at this time and we will revote we, we will vote in reverse order um, all in favor of Johnny Piner being vice chairman say aye. aye all in favor of Thomas Ross being vice chairman aye. say aye. 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 Thomas Harris excuse me we'll do it again all in favor of Thomas Harris as vice chairman say aye, aye. aye. congratulations Thomas Harris. Um, before we rearrange the seats, uh, the board must also appoint its executive secretary. Is there a motion to reappoint James Rhodes as executive secretary of the Pitt County Planning Board? So so moved. Moved. Is there a second? Second. second? All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, now I think we should take a brief recess to rearrange the chairs of chairman and vice chair. Okay, we'll close the meeting temporarily. Okay, we'll resume our meeting at this time. We have Mark coming up. Go ahead. Good evening. Uh, first item we have tonight is uh, a petition for a uh, zoning ordinance text amendment. Uh, Pitt County received a petition from Dilton Haddock II to permit wedding event facilities in the R40 residential zoning district as an accessory use and to add wedding event facilities to the permitted use table. The following proposed amendments represent this request from Mr. Haddock, as well as other edits made by staff. The first amendment would be to add this uh, wedding event facility in the um, development regulations, section eight, and also to add it to table five dash one, the list of permit uses. Uh, this amendment would permit wedding event facilities as a conditional use in the rural agricultural rural residential and R40 residential districts and with development standards in the commercial office institutional and industrial districts. And it would be permitted as an accessory use in residential districts. Development conditions that are proposed with this amendment uh, include uh, having a minimum lot size of two acres, uh, setbacks of 50 feet from the property lines, as well as 100 feet from occupied residential structures. Uh, these facilities would be subject to the Pitt County Norris Ordinance, which is enforced by the Sheriff's Department. And we're also proposing that no outside amplified sound uh, take place in residential districts past 10 p.m. 
building size would be limited to uh, 7,500 square feet uh, in residential districts and one structure per five acres in residential districts as well. There, the structure should uh, shall meet the North Carolina Building Code as well as any environmental health requirements. As far as uh, the submittal for a, uh, a facility like this, it, we would require a narrative describing the facility with the hours of operation, the volume of events, and the anticipated number of attendees, as well as a site plan um, that shows the detail and dimensions of the proposed facility. Since these, uh, this type of use would be infrequent, uh, we're not requiring the parking to be paved, but uh, we would require parking stops. And the, as far as screening, the entire perimeter of the facility must be screened according to the zoning ordinance buffer yard requirements. And they would be limited to a one sign, a max height of eight feet, and a max size of 32 square feet in residential districts. Part of this amendment, we're adding a couple definitions to the zoning ordinance, uh, one for wedding event facility and another for agritourism. Um, this, this type of use is, falls under the state's definition of agritourism and is exempt from zoning ordinance regulations in uh, municipalities and counties. Uh, most of you heard Eric last, uh, last meeting talk about consistency statements. As part of the planning board's um, duties, uh, you adopt a cons consistency statement that you forward to the county commissioners for amendments and rezonings. Um, due to some recent court cases in other jurisdictions, uh, Pitt County is elected to add more detail into the consistency statement, specifically say why these amendments or rezonings are consistent with our comprehensive land use plan and why they are reasonable in the public interest. So we believe um, this uh, amendment is consistent uh, with our comprehensive land use plan uh, because we're requiring a conditional use permit with development standards and the residential districts, which will help maintain property values. And the screening and setback requirements will minimize conflicts, conflicts between incompatible land uses. And we believe it's reasonable in the public interest because permitting this use will allow citizens to provide a service that is in demand and permitting this use as an accessory use in residential districts will also help maintain the character and identity of the rural areas of Pitt County. The staff's recommendation is to afford the, this draft amendment language to the county commissioners with a favorable recommendation. As far as the amendment process, um, public comments can now be entertained by the planning board and then the planning board will make a recommendation to the county commissioners and the commissioners will hold their public hearing on this uh, on November 17th. At, time that, at that time, they will take action on the request. So Mr. Chair, if you'd like to open up for public comments. Yeah, okay. This time we open the floor for public comments on this request and I have uh, Alex Haddock signed up to speak. You have three minutes. You'll come around and state your name. And <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And for the record, my name is Alex Haddock. Um, my mother and father, Robin and Dickie Haddock, are the owners of the Robin's Nest, and I've been handling um, this process on their behalf, um, working with Mr. Rhodes here. Um, just to give you a little bit of background information, the reason this kind of came to light with us, um, we have been um, throwing uh, events and um, planning events for family and friends for several years now. Um, and after my mother semi-retired from nursing, she decided that this would be a good business for her um, moving forward. Um, as we have gone through this process of transitioning into making it a business, we have done several different things. We have traveled from county to county all over the state basically um, throwing different events um, all the way from Hickory um, to Little Washington. And as we have decided to advance our business, we realized that it would be great for us to have our own venue space um, in which we could throw our own events on our property. Um, as we began to kind of figure out how this would work, uh, we decided that we wanted to approach county government because we wanted to follow um, their rules and regulations to the letter of the law 
at that point in time, I reached out to Mr. James Rhodes, um, a friend of ours in our church, and he uh, gave me some recommendations on different ways we could proceed. But we both realized in our initial meeting that there was a need um, on a countywide basis for such uh, an amendment to the ordinance. Um, he told me that there have been several cases in which um, he saw that this could be beneficial. And so um, as we have moved forward, um, we kind of basically set this up as um, a conditional use for our primary um, use land, which is basically as um, has already been presented, a residential use property. Um, this way, it allows us to continue living on our land, which is substantial for um, putting a business um, on our property um, around eight acres. Um, but we wanted to make sure that uh, having that eight acres also um, followed all of your rules and conditions. And so we've been through all of these conditions um, with Mr. Rhodes and his assistants, um, and we feel that they're fair. Uh, they have really helped us through this process, and we feel like this is a good thing, not just for us, but for the county as well. Um, it is a business that uh, is in high demand, and I think there are several cases in which it would be beneficial um, for the, on the countywide level. Um, so with that said, um, you know, we are in favor of this um, amendment, and we hope that you will entertain this um, as a good idea for Pitt County. Um, I would also ask, um, as a final note, um, we have Go ahead and finish. We, ha we have been through all of the um, conditions set forth um, in this amendment, um, and everything is great. Um, the only thing we might would ask, if you would gratefully entertain it, um, is if the setback from property lines um, could be 30 feet, um, simply because 50 feet, um, especially with a minimum of two acres, if you do have two acres, really restricts um, where you could put such a structure. Um, in our case, we do have plenty of land, but 50 feet really, even in our case with eight acres, restricts us very um, tightly to where we can put our building. So we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, Yes. Uh, is there any photos of where they're talking about? Is there any? It should be. Uh, there's no photos of this exact location. Um, this is just to amend the language in the zoning okay. ordinance. So this I didn't know whether y'all had any photos that y'all kind of like taken, went out, looked at the property. Have y'all visited the property? We've looked at the property. Okay. So, um, you know, if this amendment was approved, then they would come back and apply for a conditional use permit and submit a site plan okay. uh, showing where they would put the facility. I was just curious. I, you know, kind of get a visual of what and, Mr. Hines, I appreciate you bringing up that question. Just for the new members especially, this is a zoning ordinance amendment. We really, this particular use is not allowed in the county right now because it's not explicitly cited in our table of uses. So this gets us talking about it. What you will see more than likely, if this goes through, you'll get a rezoning request or some request through here. In this case, since it's looked at as a conditional use permit, more than likely it'll go straight to the commissioners for their consideration on a case-by-case -case basis. They'll get a site plan and ensure that everything meets the requirements that you're talking about tonight. The setbacks, again, uh, with a conditional use permit um, is certainly something to be considered by you tonight. Um, the setbacks can be changed by the commissioner since it's a conditional use permit in the residential districts. So even if it's cited as a 30-foot minimum, if there are some neighbors that are objecting to it, the commissioners could increase that amount if needed. So that's just for your consideration tonight. Well, I'll make a motion that we um, request a setback from the commissioner's form. Can we do that? Uh, James, any more public comment? Yeah. We got. Yeah, is there any more public comments before we go to that? Now you can ask James your oh, question. Okay. <laughs> Do we need to make a motion to ask the commissioners for the setback? Um, what you're looking at tonight is forwarding along a recommendation. So if you agree with Mr. Haddock's uh, request to reduce it to 30 foot, we've got 50 feet in there right now. That's your prerogative, um, staff. 
for consistency purposes, we put 50 feet in there. Again, mm -hmm. since it's a conditional use permit, uh, we won't stand in opposition to that request at all. Um, it probably is appropriate if you look at some of the smaller sites that we'll be contending with. Eight acres, you might could get by with the 50. Some of these smaller ones, you might not. So what we're requesting tonight is that you consider all the language that we have before you. And if you'd like to entertain reducing the setback to 30 feet, that can be had tonight. And we'll forward that along with the recommendation to the commissioners. The, the, the setback is for the actually building structure. Is that correct? It is. Okay. That is correct. Chairman, I'll second uh, Ricky's motion. Okay, we have a second on that. The setback be 30 feet. Make that recommendation to the commissioners. Everybody in favor? We need to take a vote now. Everybody in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. All right. The uh, next item is a uh, rezoning request by Michael Bateman. This uh, request to rezone 5.47 acres located on NC 11 North. That's just south of its intersection with NC 30. Uh, parcel number 76124. The request is to rezone from general commercial to heavy commercial conditional district. Here's an aerial view of the subject property. <coughs> so it's, it's uh, pretty close to Bethel's playing jurisdiction. Here's a view of the existing commercial structure. This is a view looking uh, back south uh, towards Greenville. This is the view from the subject property across 11 and another view as well of the existing residence across NC 11. It's the view looking north. You can see uh, the Commercial that is close to it is uh, Sun Energy One, but uh, that is also in Bethel's uh, playing jurisdiction. So our future land use map has a subject property designated as rural residential, um, with uh, commercial just to the north of it. The rural residential uh, agricultural designation is intended to include a mix of low density residential agricultural, forestry, churches, very limited commercial, office or public institutional uses, and criteria for non-residential uses in this category would include frontage to a major state highway and spatial separation from non-compatible uses such as existing residential development. This is our existing land use map. Um, these are the conditions of currently what's on the ground there. You can see it's there's the commercial, which is the subject property, um, the residential across NC-11, and uh, for the most part, it's largely undeveloped farmland. This is our current Pitt County zoning map, has the subject property as general commercial, with the rest being uh, rural agricultural. The request is for heavy commercial, and this district district is intended to accommodate a range of intensive retail, service, office, limited wholesale, and multifamily residential uses in areas that have access to major thoroughfares or U.S. highways, or are located at major intersections and have the necessary utilities to support such development. This request is also a conditional district request uh, for the wholesale trade of machinery, equipment supplies, and heavy equipment repair. This use specifically is for forestry equipment sales and service. As far as the conditional district request, they provide a site plan of the use. Outline in red is the property boundary. This, uh, the green is showing the uh, proposed landscape buffer around the property. As the uh, existing, uh, it's roughly 4,000 square foot metal commercial building, and the uh, existing uh, gravel drive and parking around the building. NCDOT uh, submitted comments that they require uh, 
applicant to pave from the edge of the pavement to the property line. And as part of the zoning ordinance, we're also going to require them to uh, pave the driveway in any parking area they may have. This is the existing fence around the property. Uh, you can see it expands uh, to the rear of it um, about 100 feet roughly past the property line. Um, so another, the second requirement would be to have them reduce the size of that fenced in area to be located entirely within the commercial zone. We believe this site meets the, uh, is consistent with the comprehensive land use plan because it meets locational criteria for the proposed use. There are no residentially occupied structures immediately adjacent to the subject property and the site is located on a major North Carolina highway. And we, we believe it's reasonable in the public interest because this use will provide necessary agricultural equipment based services and occupy an existing vacant commercial building rather than developing on existing farmland. So we recommend approval of the request by Michael Bateman to rezone 5.47 acres located on NC 11 North, just south of his intersection with NC 30, parcel number 76124, from general commercial to heavy commercial conditional district. And we also recommend adding the requirements that the existing fenced area be moved so it's located entirely within the rezoned area and the driveway and parking area must also be paved so it meets the standards in the zoning ordinance. At this time, public comments can now be entertained, and then you'll make a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners, and they'll hold a hearing regarding this request at their November 17th meeting, and they'll take action at that time. I now have a meeting for public comments. Have anyone knowledge want to comment on this request? <clears throat> yes, sir. Go up and give your name, and you have three minutes. My name is Denise Gray, and I'm speaking on behalf of my parents. That's John and Addie Kuzar, and they are the residents that live across the highway from the structure. And we just really have uh, just a few concerns. That's one, if this is heavy equipment, um, how much noise will be coming through there? And secondly, um, runoff. If this is heavy equipment, are there going to be any precautions dealing with, like, oil spills? Because there's a well. They use well water over there, and both of them are cancer patients. So there's a serious precaution for them. And that's just one thing, one concern that we have dealing with this whole heavy equipment situation. And they're the only residents over there. So that's just one thing I want you all to take a look at. And I just really want to know what kind of precautions are being set for like water runoff because of the well situation. That's about it. James, can you address that? As far as the noise, uh, again, there's a four-lane highway facility there, NC 11 North. Um, uh, I believe that separates the residents that she's speaking of from this activity. Uh, from what we understand about this operation, uh, certainly they've got to fall within the parameters of the county's noise ordinance, and that's administered through the sheriff's office. But outside of that, I think there's enough distance separation that should not be a problem. I would think the traffic on Highway 11 would probably offset any noise that comes off of this site. Our understanding this is more for service and or sale of equipment, so we don't recognize that there would be much, if any, uh, noise coming off of that site. As far as the runoff uh, in that particular area, we do have stormwater regulations that will certainly be in place if there's over a certain amount of impervious service, surfaces on site. Um, most of this uh, property would drain the opposite direction, um, actually drain back toward the west from um, the site, the residential site that she's spoken about. Um, this site, although the county would not enforce it, any of the spillage that may come from any of the equipment there is certainly regulated by the state. Um, and there are requirements with these types of operations that they stay clean and permitted through the state as required. So 
although I would say the local government here may not be the one regulating it, there are some regulations in place to protect individuals from any spills. Ma'am, does that uh, answer your questions yes, sir. and your concerns? Thank you so much. <clears throat> Anybody else have any comments? We'll close the public comment section this time. What's the wish of the board? I make a motion to approve. Second. All right, everybody in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, likewise. Thank you. Okay. Chairman, we just have a few informational items tonight. One that we have been following up with you about pretty much every month is our regional hazard mitigation plan. We're proud to say that after almost a year of development, uh, it has been submitted to the state for review. Those of you that are new to the board, this is a plan that uh, helps keep the federal funding coming to our local governments here if there is a federal disaster. So after Hurricane Floyd, for example, had we, if these types of plans were required at that time, we probably would not have gotten the funding uh, necessary if the plan was not in place. So now that it is a requirement, if um, we do fall under a declaration, we've got to ensure that this is a valid plan. The state is currently reviewing it. Hopefully we'll hear back from them in the next couple of months. It goes on to FEMA from there. And uh, just remember this not only covers Pitt County and the 10 municipalities within the county, but it also covers four other counties as well. So uh, just like to recognize Brian Jones who from our staff that's been instrumental in kind of seeing this through. And on from there, uh, hopefully we'll get the plan adopted early next year. Our current plan, which is a five-year plan, is valid through next July. So needless to say, we've got to get this in place to ensure that we're protected if there are further uh, disasters here locally. Any questions about the plan? And we certainly, on the screen, you can see the website that you can actually go on. I know we've had planning board members that were very interested in this particular project, you're welcome to go online and see what the latest draft includes. Um, other things in your package are a monthly report as well as some uh, different articles that might be of interest to you. And Mr. Chairman, one other thing that I'd like to make mention, especially for the new planning board members, planning staff is certainly willing to provide an orientation session if you'd like that. Um, Certainly we'll be bringing more information to you month to month, but if you'd like to kind of get an overview of some of these activities, what I would recommend is maybe we next month we will have, I know at least one item coming back for you for consideration. So we could certainly do an orientation session, maybe starting at 4.30 before the meeting. Uh, would not be televised, be just kind of an informal setting where you could ask questions. We'd bring information to you and also quickly go over the agenda item that's coming before you that night. So, um, Mr. Chairman, I'll leave that with you. And certainly we invite the full board, but most particularly those new members, we'd like to have them available if, if possible. Thank you. So, orientation session, anyone interested? Got one, got a couple. We'll just go ahead and plan for it. We'll 4.30 that night. That'll be November the 5th, November the 19th. 4.30, okay. We'll notify everyone and remind you of that and we'll keep you for about 30 or 45 minutes. And also at that time, we'd probably like to get your pictures taken for the website. So we'll have that set up so um, wear what you like that night that you'd like to have your picture taken in. So we'll send you a reminder about that as well. So 4.30, uh, November 19th, we'll have the orientation session. Any questions? If not, Mr. Chairman, that's all we have for tonight. I want to thank the Haddocks for doing this wed thing because I, I think it's going to be really nice and people, a lot of people now like to get Married outdoors and all, they've called in and want to get married at the fairgrounds. And I ain't got nothing but just empty buildings out there. 
But I think it's going to be really nice and be something that the community and the county would be proud of. And I want to thank you all for having a division to see something like that I need in this county. Thank you so much. Any uh, board members got a, any comments they'd like to make before we close, adjourn? Well, uh, I'd just like to say uh, thank you all for having me aboard. This is my second stint. Uh, around uh, on the planning board. Look forward to serving the uh, people in the county. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Okay, well, we'll stand adjourned. Have a motion to adjourn. Okay. okay.